the Joe Rogan experience. I was broke when I was coming up, man. Eleven Where'd you kids, start? Huh? Where'd you start doing stand-up? Back in Detroit. In Detroit? Yeah. I was, um, my brother used to go to acting class on Thursday, he and his wife. So I said, boy, that's pretty cool. I should try to be an actor. So I got in the Yellow Pages. They had them Yellow Pages. They don't have them now, though. Everybody got to go through their phone and get the number. But they had the Yellow Pages. I go through, I went to the Yellow Pages and went to an acting class, private acting lessons, and I called a guy. He said, $25 an hour. Come on over. And I, 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 we can get started. So this teacher at John Binkelman's acting classes put in a comedy show once once a year. And he said, I want you to be on the show. I said, I don't know nothing about no comedy. He said, well, you... This is very lucrative business. You can make a lot of money. I said, really? <laughs> <laughs> I went in there and, I went in there and stole the show. Wow. I said, wait a minute. That's funny. I went in there and stole the show. I used to do impressions of Nat King Cole, Johnny Mathis, and uh, what's the boy, Joe Cocker and all that stuff. Oh, wow. Old Mick Jagger. I used to do Mick oh, Jagger. Wow. DJ Stoko, Stoko, <laughs> and they had about five hundred people out there for the show. I'm bouncing across the stage like Joe Cocker, boy. It was so funny, and I got a stand ovation. And I said, "Wait, I could probably make some money doing this." So, so I, it really was money. Money was your number one motivation. Oh, oh when you're broke, money is you ain't no talking about love and, and affection. <laughs> That's some bull. <laughs> he didn't, have that, out of my way he so didn't can, have that luxury. No luxury. Uh, get out of my way so I can count this money. <laughs> <laughs> Where did you start out in L.A.? What clubs did you start out here? Oh, I drove from Detroit to L.A. I moved to New York. I moved to New York um, 71, 1971. I was about 30 years old, 29, 30. And I went to New York to be a fashion model. I was a fashion model in Detroit. Really? Fashion Commercials, I worked at Cadillac Motor Car, and and my job was plating bumpers, these big fucking bumpers. And so the bumpers, I, I, I would need the money, so I'm picking this up because, you know, you use, now you're using adrenaline and you're losing endorphins and everything else you got in your body to kick in, put that big bump on this fucking line so it to keep going and get into the plating pit. So I have now the bumper go down, and I had about three minutes. I look at this magazine. I saw a guy standing next to a car. I said, I look better than that dude. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> I, went into the, I went to the Yellow Pages again <laughs> and got me a call, the acting lady, called the um, modeling schools. They said, oh, sure, come on in. They gave me a job that weekend. I thought I was hot. I went to New York. Them dudes looked 10 times better than me. They talk, <laughs> they talk. I said, you a model? They said, you a model? <laughs> I'm the midget model. <laughs> So I couldn't do that, so I, I, uh, I got the hell out of there. I went back to had, went to New York. I went, I stayed in New York three years. Back to L.A. And, I mean, I went back to Detroit, got a car, and drove to D, uh, L.A. by myself. And when you went to L.A., you went to do stand up. Yeah, I went to do acting and and, and uh, stand up. Stand, I cut that modeling out. I, that, yes. that, that, that shit didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> Where did you uh, start out doing stand up here? At the comedy store. The store. Yeah, I was the first one. I was there with Mitzi. Wow. I was there with Mitzi first started. Really? Sammy had the place. Sammy and Mitzi breaking up. Mitzi, Sammy used to, Sammy went on the road. Sammy was a big, he was a big time comic. He working for Frank Sinatra and Dean Martin, all of them. He opening for them. Mitzi needed somebody. To, I needed a place. So I am I got a job. Mitzi gave me a job as an MC. Dave Latimer was the MC the first show. I MC the second show. He didn't have no money then either. He had a wife. He had a red truck and a dog named Bob. That's the only thing he came to L.A. with. And I just had this blue, I had this blue uh, Mustang I bought for about 150 to drive to L.A. And a 150 dollar car drove to LA, all the way to L.A. Wow! You know I was determined to get out there and get me some of that money. <laughs> that car, that car leak, leaked all the transmission fluid. I had to get out every 200 miles. To fill the car back up with oil and transmission fluid. Every 200 miles? Every 200 miles. I bet that night, man, you hear, oh, oh, you hear that shit. You know, <laughs> and it's the only, only light you see is the headlights on the car. Uh -huh. I got out that point, got my stick. I had a stick with me. and put the, Had a little funnel, put that oil in that car. Looking around, you know, I'll be doing like this. <laughs> <laughs> uh huh. And got to California. No, I actually went to Las Vegas first. And I fucked you up. got stuck. I got stuck in Las yeah, Vegas. Yeah, he told me about that. What happened? 
I, I, blew I, his money. I, got, the man, I had a guy tell me. <laughs> Try to keep this thing in front of you. Can you grab that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, man. I Please guy, stand sit I in front of the mic. I had a guy tell me. <laughs> My friend, he rich boy. He said, "Look, just go to go to Las Vegas first. See what the comics are doing, and then you go to L.A. Then you know what they're doing in Las Vegas. That's the comics they work in Las Vegas all the time." I went there. Them old ass joke, Jewish joke. They playing. They tell it. But Gabe Kaplan, that's so funny. Big head motherfucker ain't funny. He's a good actor, <laughs> but he he was. I waste all my time, I, but I, he told me stay there half an hour. I mean, half a half a thirty days to stay there. So I paid up my rent for thirty days, and I went that night. Got my, my new my navy suit on and, and as sharp as I can be, boy. Got modeling clothes, you know. I'm in there standing around, you know, have a big old afro. Man, I lost every dime I had at that fucking horseshoe casino. I was I went back home crying. <laughs> so. <laughs> Now, I don't know what the hell I'm going to do. I, here, I've been, drove two and a half days across the country. And so I I call people in Detroit to try to get some money. But, you know, when you call, you a long ways away. Everybody got no money. People don't answer the phone. They say, oh, no, I ain't got no money. Click. <laughs> so I got some borrowed bar money from some of my friends and uh, stay, had to stay there for six months yeah, until, I, s- until I got enough money to go to L.A. Well, you said that, didn't you tell me that you hit, you did one of the slotto machines and it, it hit with I like three grand or something? I had $150 left. I saw Dinah Ross. See, what I would do, I would go at night and during the weekend, during the week, I mean, you can go to the front of the uh, casinos and the guy in the front there, he say, I'm a comic. I just want to sit in the back here and watch some, the comic and I'm gone. They, they let you do that. You should sit there. Anybody, nobody sitting there. You've got 2,000 seats in those places, something like that. So I had a, a dollar and a half left. I saw Diana Ross. She had a great show. So on the out way, I said, I'm going to play this fucking money. I, mean, I just just be broke. My check is coming from the unemployment. Uh, it'll be here another day or two. I can go without food for a day. <laughs> 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 Jesus. My stomach said, you better put some down here, nigga. <laughs> 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 so, <laughs> so... I put that money in the machine. It rung up, I think it was 7000 Really? Yeah. I thought I fucked up something. Said, oh, shit, now what have I done? The guy came over. He said, I just got on job. Just hold on, sir. I just got here. You have struck the jackpot today. I said, what jackpot? Uh, he, gave, he came and just put them $100 in my hand. It was like a miracle. It was like, like. Moses came down and handed me some money or something. It was so damn, that money felt so good. I went home and packed my stuff. I had about two more days on my rent. I got in that car. I got me some gas. <laughs> I drove. You know how they have in, in, in Vegas. They got the little island in the middle of the street. Drove over that damn thing going back, going the other opposite direction. I said, hell with this. I'm. And when you go over island, constant boom, 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 combs come out, dust come out, old combs, old stuff come out, all, all on, <laughs> all over your seat, on your hand, your feet be dirty, the dust be all over it. I drove all the way from three o'clock in the morning, four o'clock in the morning, whatever time it was, I drove all the way back to L.A. Oh man, and my friend let me stay at her house for about a month. Candy, she was a good friend of mine. I'm glad she let me do that because that was that was amazing. She lived in Beverly Hills from from a from apartment, a motel. I mean, uh, and no money, eating a potato. The worst. I saw now. I know it's time for me to get some money. I'm eating a, a baked potato, um, a white potato now <laughs> with uh, with a, with a white potato and some old bread and some syrup. And I said, I got to get the fuck out of here. This ain't, this ain't going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> this is not good for the kid. I come out here with big plans. And I went straight I went straight That's to her, crazy. her house, and I got a job at Gucci. And I, I went to the comedy store and everything. I just stayed if, there. If you didn't go to Vegas, would you have even got stuck? No, you, I, I wouldn't have got stuck. You wouldn't, so that's a six-month that's a six month waiting game that you had to play because you lost your money on, on accident. The worst. On I was purpose. counting airplanes coming in and taking off because you can see them from my – my door. You see the plane come into La Karen, I think the name of the hotel would be the, the uh, plane terminal. They come in, you see them take off. That's all I did all day long. Plane coming in. Plane That's wild. 
plane taking off. <coughs> plane coming in, plane taking off. <laughs> and you just stuck there. <laughs> stuck in Las Vegas. I learned. So I, I, I deserve my money. So people tell me, you, you, uh, you love money? Yes, I deserve every dime. Because <laughs> <laughs> I went through the, the shits. Oh, my God. And that car lasted another four or five years. Really? 65 Mustang. That's a great car. It, it is a great car. Regular gas. I got me some new tires. Like I told you, I got me some new tires. A case of oil and a case of transmission <laughs> <laughs> And I got a, I never forgot. I got my old uh, color TV and a bucket of Kentucky Fried Chicken. <laughs> Back then when you were trying to get up in the store, how did, how did the auditions go? What did they do? No, you know you had to go through the uh, potluck. You had to go through that. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Same. Open mic. Yeah. Same, same thing. today. But there wasn't that many comics. They had to close at about eleven o'clock because there's no comics that go on anymore. How many comics were there? Oh, it must have been about ten, fifteen. Really? And what and year they, is this? Huh? What year is this? Seventy four. So it's oh, the beginning. The oh, very as soon as beginning. we, as soon as Mitzi, Mitzi just started. Wow. I was there in the beginning. She, she, she liked me. She would give me. She, Johnny, come out of here and. Work the door. You can do anything you want. I said, I need a job, Mitzi. And so I hustled the door. Mitzi, she said, y'all better watch Johnny. He can make some money at that damn door. What I would do, I was the, what do you call it, Maitre D or something? What do you call it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Maitre D. So I would put uh, for, uh, uh, reserve signs in the front seats up there. Reserved for the owner's grandmother. Reserved for the mother's grand, uh, Mitzi's father. And so... Now the main room, I mean the main room and the other room be crowded, packed. People, I said, uh, we sold out, sir. He said, what are the tables up there for? I said, that's the uh, owner's uh, grandmother be here soon. He said, well, five hundred dollars uh, put me in that seat. I said, right now. <laughs> 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 so <laughs> I would make, I would make, I would make two, two, three hundred a night. Sometimes five hundred thousand. Just at the door. Uh, Mitzi, then she had me go MC and all that stuff. She, well, you said 500000 You meant 500000 A thousand. Oh, no. <laughs> it wasn't that kind of money. Okay. Right? That's, uh, that picture's her. That's Mitzi. I, I know I recognize that picture. Yeah. Yeah. That's when she was younger, though. Yeah. There's a photo that was from the comedy store that was yeah. sitting around the back room and mm. yeah. Taylor Boss. That's he, when I. He painted I, it. Yeah. That's why I, um, I, that's what I knew her. When she was like that, she was. She's a, yeah, that, that's the picture. There she right is there. right there. Yeah, that's the she, picture he used. She was a smart lady. Sure was. Let me tell you something, brother. She was a whip. She was. She had her ways. Yeah, she was. She was definitely eccentric, but she's yeah. one of the most important people ever in comedy. In comedy, and people yeah. don't realize that. Yeah, a lot of people don't realize it. Mitzi was the shits. She and yep. that little Paulie with his crazy head yep. running around that little baby. I know, I know them all. I know Pimpin' on Paulie since he's a baby. I know them all. Mitzi, Mitzi, hey, Johnny, you got to come back. We don't have nobody to work the door. I can get up and go over there. So I'm at the door. I got uh, 8 o'clock show. You know, 8 o'clock. So I'm in the scene and, and working the door and everything and, and hosting the room and all that. So I'm up there on stage. Um, I put the, you've got a little rope you put across the door and close the curtain. And, you know, people come up in the original room, they come up the steps there. You know the original room? Mm-hmm, yeah. Sure. So she's in the booth taking money, taking pictures, taking money and get, selling tickets. She and I are the only one there working. And, and the bar is in the back. So uh, Mitzi, I'm going to stay, ba 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 Now I've got 10 people in the room. So, so she said, just go ahead and I get them, get, the, get me the cover and, and you go ahead and put the rope back. So now... I'm up there about, I got 15 minutes. She said, about three minutes, four minutes into my act, Johnny, there are people that lying. <laughs> Come down here and let them in. You cannot do your more, no more material. Come on, Johnny. I said, Mitzi, I'm trying to finish my act. Johnny, come on. I want to get this money. That's what I learned it from her, too. <laughs> we'll get this money before they turn around and go home. <laughs> oh, God. I, that was the funniest. She's the funniest lady. She's the funniest lady. Let me tell you, she was hot. She was tough. Mitzi was tough. She told me, you stick with me, I'll make you a rich man. I said, Mitzi, I come here to be a comic. I ain't come here to be no rich man. I'm coming to be a comic. But she's too much trouble, too much eccentric, eccentric, too eccentric. I didn't want to hang around too long. Argus still there out of his mind, see? He's, Argus is still there. Argus still there. He was yeah. there last night. Yeah, I know it. I go there and see him. I see him all the time. When they, when I go by there, I only go once a year or so. 
But I see Argus. Argus I like Argus. He's a, he was ta- he's talented. Yes. A genius, but he didn't he didn't want to leave the comic store. Mm. <laughs> he got a radio station downstairs, he told me. They have a podcast. Oh, it's a podcast. Yeah, downstairs. they have a podcast studio. You ever mm. heard of that? Yeah, it's yeah. Good studio. Yeah. But, but Mitzi, I've been knowing Mitzi. Let me tell you, I knew her in 1974 when I went over there. And I noticed when I got on when I got on um open mic night for people who want to try to become on the regular show. Mitzi used to love impressionists. She loved people who could do voices. And I just realized that after about three weeks of being there trying to be funny, and she, I'm doing old Red Fox jokes. <laughs> I'm doing a bunch. I, 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 the horse race was going and, and the, the, the jockey was, was riding on my dick. The horse name was my dick. <laughs> Just fucking Red Fox used to be. He would come by and he would be so fucking funny. Um, so then the person come by and sing. She loved people to sing. Uh, Tina Turner. The women that sang Tina Turner. She put two or three of them right behind each other. They do the same song. Jesus. I said, Missy going crazy, boy. Missy <laughs> Why I do like you think Tina she did Turner. that? Why she would she put them on? She loved impressionists. But she put them on back to back? And she the women. Cause you know, the women, all of them got the same impressions. But she put a two or three of them on the same show. Wow. Same impressions. So I went up there. I started doing impressions because I did them in Detroit on the show there with uh, Nat King Cole and them. She said, oh, Johnny, this is so wonderful. I want you to work Friday night. She put me on early. He put me on some nice times and shit. But, this, <sighs> but she wanted me to stay with her on that door and emceeing, help her out. She had me cl- close the door, close the place one day. I said, I shouldn't be responsible for this. <laughs> you can't even close the door. Just lock the fucking door. Well, she's always had comics work there. Yeah. From All the, the beginning. All the time. When but you I go wanted there. to work. I wanted to work there. Most of them comics living in her house upstairs, up there. On the Crest Hill. Hill? Yeah. Yeah, they lived in the, on the hill there. She yeah. bought all the property around there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mitzi owned, Mitzi owned so much. She owned so much money when she died. Oh, my God. The house up on this house. The house that, you know the house she had up on the hill there? Crest Hill, yeah. That's what the name of the house, yeah. the street? That was the one where all the lot of comics lived in it, right? No, 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 no. The, the comics lived behind the comedy store up the hill. There. She got about three two. or four of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She owned about three or four. I went over there. She would have a party over there. The fucking party was fabulous. I'm look, oh, we're looking, you look, oh, look at California. <laughs> And these dudes got the house all dirty. You know, they see why they didn't try to make the bed and the covers thrown on top of the bed. You know, just thrown, nothing tucked in, nothing. But Mitzi <laughs> owned all that back up in there. Yeah. I almost bought that Crest Hill house. Yeah, yeah that, it was for sale back in the day. I went to look at it. But I had a dog, and I was pretty sure he's not, he was going to get out of that backyard. Yeah. I had a crazy dog. I was like, this is not a good yard. It's the one right me. behind the yeah. store, right? Yeah, yeah. I think, I think does Paul, Paulie have it? I think. Paulie's got the one that's up and to the right. Oh, okay. He's got one that's well, like at the top of the driveway. He owns it, I think. Right? Yeah. I saw him I saw him the other night at the at the store in the parking lot and he was he was telling me like how yeah. he, he used to watch him. Oh my God, I knew this little <laughs> sucker. I, I didn't watch his ass. I watched him run to the wall and stuff. But <laughs> <laughs> he had I Kenison babysitting him, man. Huh? Kenison used oh, to yeah. babysit him too. That's crazy. Oh my God. Yeah. Can you imagine leaving your fucking me. child with Kennison? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Kennison was. I I told David Letterman, asked, he said, Spoon, anybody new at the comedy store that's real funny? I said, man, you got to see this crazy dude named Sam Kennison. And so he said, well, have him uh, have him send me a tape or something. Or give us a call on the show. I said, Dave, you're going to love him. Man, Sam went on that show and Dave just fell on the floor. <laughs> Sam, Sam was so funny. And Sam, Sam, I said, Sam, David Letterman want to see you on his show. He said, oh, really? It's the first time he ever got on TV. Wow. And uh, he was so, he, he always been my friend. Sam? Sam Kenneth always was my friend. So I used to work. Mitzi, uh, after a while, uh, she would get these young cats to, like David Letterman to be the MC of the first show. So I would work this, at the 12 o'clock show, all the crazy people on the show. Me, Paul Mooney, Sam Kennison. Uh, all the, uh, what's the boy name? And he talked like this. And he do Elvis, and he did uh, Andy Kaufman. Andy Kaufman. I remember introducing him. I introduced all of them. He said, "My name is Andy Kaufman." <laughs> 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 I said, yeah, I know. <clears throat> Just say they come to me and tell me what they want me to. How they want me to introduce them, you know? Right. Just say Andy Kaufman and Andy Kaufman. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking to do like he's out of his fucking mind. I'm Andy Cookman. 
<laughs> oh. Lenny Schultz, you, know, you, know, you ever seen sure. him? Sure, Crazy Lenny. Crazy Lenny with the with the with the pigs. Yeah, <laughs> he used to bring dolls on stage and punched them. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. It was great. <laughs> it was he, so had a, great. he had a he had a base to do about like uh, <laughs> like remember the only the the bear Smokey the bear only you could prevent. Yeah, four. Yeah. He would pull out the bear only you could prevent four sides. He was fuck you yeah, and he right. punched the bear. It was so ridiculous. <laughs> And people, people would come down just to see Lenny. He would go nuts. He was like really like had crazy expressions. Yeah. He was re- just an unbelievably funny guy, like a naturally funny guy. Yeah. He was an East Coast legend.